Now let's go straight to our big spotlight. When we talk about M&M, the focus is invariably on the company's SUVs and tractors. Well, of course, since those are the two segments where M&M enjoys a dominant market share. However, over the last five years, the Mumbai-based conglomerate has been quietly putting in place a strategy to expand its agriculture business. In fact, during this period, M&M's agri-vertical has in fact seen overall sales jump eight times. It's interesting to note that at a time when India is facing an acute agricultural crisis, one of India's leading groups is increasing focus on the sector with an aim to improve productivity for the farmers and bottom lines for the group. To understand M&M's agriculture strategy and the growth potential for the sector, we are joined by none other than the man himself who's spearheading that foray. Dr. Pavan Goenka, thank you so very much for joining us on The Big Picture. We've seen M&M making some key announcements in the agriculture business in the recent past. Talk us through the philosophy and the thinking of the group as far as the agriculture vertical is concerned, Dr. Goenka. I don't know that when uh, we started our agribusiness uh, formally, structurally, about five years ago, uh, and when I say agribusiness, I'm not talking about tractor and agri-machinery because that was already there in a very big way. Uh, but rest of the agriculture uh, uh, yeah, ecosystem infrastructure, uh, we were a very small player, 70, 80 uh, crores of business we had at that time. And uh, today we have grown in five years to about 600 crores uh, in agribusiness. It's still very small, uh, but a very good growth of uh, eight times in that time frame. So we have worked with uh, three philosophies uh, during this time uh, to decide which businesses we get into and what do we do uh, once we get into that business. And the first very important part, and, uh, and uh, I say this with all sincerity and, honest, sincerity and honesty, this is a big driver for us in Mahindra Group that whatever business that we get into, we must bring value to the farmer. Uh, because farmer is our primary target in terms of the rice philosophy that we have of driving a positive change. And when I say bring value to the farmer, it comes in two or three different forms. Uh, uh, we work very closely with the farmers, no matter which, which uh, sort of uh, output or which agriculture field that we're talking about, uh, to improve the productivity. And as you know very well that in India, the productivity of most farm products is very low compared to the global average and significantly low compared to the overall, the, the best in class. So we work closely with the farmers uh, to do that. Second is help to reduce input cost, uh, bring in uh, better practices and help in uh, some cases to get better revenue for the farmers. So that's the part that we must find ourselves to be able to add value to. The second part is add value to the customer. Uh, customers want to consume the product uh, and there uh, our, our primary focus is to bring in consistent good quality uh, whether it is grapes or banana or pulses or mustard oil, whatever it might be, uh, to bring in a good, consistent quality uh, to the consumer. We are not playing a low price game. We are playing the game of bringing consistent quality. And third, of course, is it has to make business sense. Uh, and my, for Mahindra, it has to mean uh, a, a good sort of business plan in terms of revenue growth and, and, and financial return. And so when we look at these three, we find many opportunities in the agribusiness. And so far, we have done uh, two M&As, we have done two joint ventures, we have launched four brands now, uh, we have 800 people working in the agriculture uh, business uh, and, and we expect to continue the growth that we have seen in the last five years. Well, that segment indeed has been buzzing, Dr. Goenka, but can you give us a sense what is the potential for the agriculture business for M&M going forward currently? If you can give us an idea of what percentage of revenues comes from our agriculture at this point. Well, uh, today the overall revenue that comes from agriculture business is less than one per less than one percent of the overall Mahindra Group revenue. So that's very small. Uh, but clearly, the potential that we have in agriculture business is enormous. Uh, the, the agriculture is such a huge uh, industry. If you were to combine everything, uh, the pulses itself is just two lakh crore, thirty billion dollar industry, and we are just uh, starting with sixty crores right now. So the opportunities are very, very high, and therefore the the pace of growth certainly will be higher in agriculture than in many of our mature businesses. And therefore, I would expect that agriculture will contribute a higher and higher share to our revenue and the profit pool both. So then is it fair to assume that in the coming few years that share will only increase to about 4 to 5 percent, Dr. Goenka? Uh, well, if I say 4 to 5 percent for agriculture, then other businesses may become very unhappy with me uh, because, because everybody is competing for that, uh, that uh, share of the pie. Uh, but I certainly would, uh, would think that agriculture will have in five years' time uh, a fairly significant uh, ranking in the size of uh, uh, businesses in the Mahindra Group. Today it might be somewhere 10, 12, and it will certainly move up. 
So then let me understand this correctly. Then the ultimate plan, it seems, and objective is to be present across the value chain because your tractors, through your tractors, you're already a household name. Are you leveraging that then to be an end-to-end -end player? Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. The common thread for us in the, in the business that we are in is the customer. Uh, whether we are in grapes business, whether we are doing pulses or whether we are doing tractors or mechanization, in all cases, a customer is the farmer. Uh, and therefore, all of these businesses are drawing a strong connect with the farmer. The Samriddhi centers that we have, 200 of them today in India, uh, are our sort of primary vehicle, primary channel uh, by which we connect with our farmer, uh, farmers. Uh, and, and, and that's what we're trying to do, that uh, can we become everything. Can we become a company that provides a tractor, that provides mechanization equipment, provides the seeds, crop care, water, and buys the output uh, uh, that, that I produce in my, in my, in my field, uh, and therefore uh, become the company that uh, helps me as a farmer uh, to, uh, to, to rise in my life. And that's, that's really the objective that we have. You know, Dr. Goenka, when you made your announcement a couple of days back to enter into the branded pul pulses, uh, it sort of coincided with pulses prices all over India reaching and reaching a new high. Do you feel that more private sector participation may perhaps help address some of the concerns on food inflation? Okay, so this is a very interesting question and gets asked often. Uh, and there is a fear that, uh, that corporates entering agriculture would increase retail prices. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. The reason I don't think so is that uh, what the corporates will do is bring in a scale in what is being done uh, and, and therefore make agriculture more efficient, more productive. Okay? One of the biggest concerns that we have in Indian agriculture today is that our productivity overall, that is yield per unit of land, is very low. Uh, except for wheat where we are kind of the word average, everywhere else we are maybe two-third, half of word average uh, in terms of overall yield. Uh, corporates coming in can bring in the latest technology, uh, both in terms, of, uh, uh, in, in, in terms of agronomy as well as in terms of equipment, uh, tractors, rotavators, whatever you have, uh, and that will improve the productivity. And we already have seen that in the thing that work that we have done with uh, our farmers in Nasik for grapes, uh, work they're already doing uh, on banana. Uh, even, in, even in mustard uh, seed, uh, we are beginning to see the benefit that we are able to bring in. And we are not doing any rocket science. We are just bringing in good business practice that are there for anybody to pick up uh, and we are just becoming an enabler we're just becoming an enabler and and if we are able to do that if we are able to remove all the inefficiencies that we have in transport inefficiency in storage then we are basically bringing the cost down and if you bring the cost down i would expect the retail prices will come down and not go up but then do you think that if the middleman goes away then that could have an impact on the end prices the, the middleman the middleman certainly go, goes away, but uh, you must not forget that uh, this is a very uh, powerful and value a add ecosystem uh, that we have. So I am not the one who considers middleman as a villain uh, in this in this whole system. Uh, I think middlemen play a very important role. Uh, the difference is that they are largely unorganized uh, and therefore they are largely not using. Uh, what I would call scientific practices for doing whatever they are doing uh, to do it well, uh, to do it well, largely. And therefore, if a uh, business coming in, a large business coming in is able to, even for the middleman, uh, help the middleman to become more organized in the value that they are adding to the whole food chain, the whole value chain of agriculture, I think their value will go up, not go down. But agriculture still continues to be a very politically sensitive issue. In fact, private sector involvement a lot of time is seen with a lot of concern and suspicion. Does that concern you? See, uh, agriculture today is about, say, 12, 13 percent of GDP. Right? Uh, and therefore, there is total value that is being generated in agriculture today uh, is, in my opinion, not sufficient to create jobs for as many people uh, as are involved in agriculture today and to provide a good income level uh, to the number of people who are dependent on agriculture. Okay. So when we talk about corporate involvement, uh, it is about how do we take Indian agriculture from a total revenue, a total, total value generation of X to 2X. And if you take it from X to 2X, even if 0.2X is taken out of that from, by corporates, there's 0.8X more on the table, which is available to, again, the people who are involved in agriculture 
and will benefit the benefit those people so i think i think the political sensitivity of corporates getting in is probably misguided and misguided because of perhaps some past experience uh, with corporates getting in not being very very right and therefore some kind of uh, uh, regulation uh, might be put in place to to ensure that uh, uh, corporates don't take undue advantage of uh, opening of, of agriculture to them and they come in with a view of i mean then then therefore dr goenka do you support perhaps more regulation in agriculture is that what you mean that's right i mean that's right that's right but but you no know, by and large we should not get into everything being regulated uh, everything should work as a free econo uh, free, free economy but if there is any situation where you find that uh, a certain sector uh, or certain section is taking advantage of the power that they have then there is no harm in regulating then there is no harm in regulating but i i, I do i do tend to think that uh, by and large uh, there will be exceptions but by and large large corporates when they're getting into agriculture they're not getting into agriculture simply from the viewpoint of increasing their revenue and profit they're getting into agriculture with a viewpoint that they want to make indian agriculture more efficient more rewarding we got to leave it at that thank you so very much dr goenka for taking out uh, your time to join us on the show tonight it's always a special to speak with you thanks very much to talk to you on a day thank you